Para poder revertir el cambio climático, debemos dejar de utilizar energías contaminantes. Y debemos hacerlo ya. Viajamos hasta Dinamarca, país que sustenta su sistema energético en un 80% con energías renovables. Y para el 2050 pretende llegar al 100%, especialmente con energía eólica proveniente de turbinas instaladas en el Mar Báltico. Nos encontramos en una zona conocida por los lugareños como el Triángulo Trecanten, específicamente en la ciudad de Fredericia. Aquí se encuentra Energinet. Organización encargada de operar y desarrollar los sistemas de transmisión de electricidad y gas natural en Dinamarca. Junto a la Unión Europea y privados, están en la producción de uno de los proyectos más ambiciosos en materia de energía eólica. Dinamarca está marcando el comienzo de una nueva e importante era para el sector energético. Se trata de la construcción de dos islas energéticas artificiales en el Mar del Norte y el Mar Báltico. Para saber más de este proyecto, nos encontramos con Hanne Edlesen, vicepresidenta de EnergyNet. How the wind energy works? How you produce it? In Denmark, we have some of the best uh, areas for wind. Yes. So there's a lot of wind all the time, especially in the seas, in the North Sea and in the Baltic Sea. Yes. And then you can put up uh, wind turbines. Yes. And they will produce energy, electricity. Uh, those wind turbines, as long as the wind is blowing. How many wind turbines do you have, or how many wind mills do you have already? In Denmark, we have uh, uh, wind on land and also wind offshore. Yes. But not as much as we can have. Uh, so we, we only have a small amount now, but it produces approximately 50% of our uh, uh, electricity consumption already. Already? Yeah. Oh, so so it is, uh, for our small country, still a lot. <laughs> yeah. But we plan to have even more, uh, oh, really? much more, up to uh, uh, 40 gigawatts, which approximately uh, suits 40 uh, million households. And how are you going to export that? Are you going to send to the, to the grid or how are you going to yeah. export that? We are making uh, cables okay. to uh, our neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, one of the keys uh, in the green transition. It's a key thing that you have transmission lines to other countries. So let's talk about this amazing project. Tell me how to start this dream. With our colleagues in, in the neighboring countries for so ta some time discussed how to uh, make a society that was 100% renewable. And then one of uh, our colleagues in, in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. he phoned uh, my boss and he said, I have this idea about making uh, an artificial island and uh, in the middle of the North Sea, far out, and then create this uh, sort of near shore environment. Oh. Uh, do you want to join? Because you know about uh, uh, neighboring countries and cabling and you know about coupling with the gas sector. So we need you guys. And then uh, my boss asked me, Hannah, this is something new. It's probably also a bit difficult. Uh, can you do it? You say, so, yeah. <laughs> I said, Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it, it sounded very exciting. Um, yeah, of course. But also quite sort of um, futuristic in the yes. beginning. Uh, we did a lot of studies and analysis and uh, asked all the clever people. <laughs> and the interesting thing was that we had actually really done all of this that was needed before just not in that scale yes. and not in that speed. Mm. But we had done it. We had done uh, artificial islands before. Yes. We had done wind turbines and wind farms before. Yeah. We have done the cabling. Uh, we have an idea about how to do uh, power to X, which can also be a part of the future energy islands. Um, so the hard thing was really to have uh, countries cooperating. Yeah. Great. So. Now we have your plan here. This is a concept. It's just a vision. It might not look like this, but, <laughs> but he has a lot of the ideas here. So it's basically uh, the hub yes. where you create a nearshore environment. Mm -hmm. Then you put up uh, the wind uh, uh, turbines, turbines and you connect those turbines directly to the island. Yeah, connected uh, by, by a line. On it. Yeah, yes. you have one over here, uh, oh, the yellow one. Yeah. yeah. So um, they only need a short cable uh, oh. from each turbine to the um, to the island and then on the island we uh, in a guinnet will transform uh, the power into uh, a kind of power that you can transport in long distances oh and then you have a, a, another color uh, of the cable yes uh, that is a, a bigger cable a more expensive cable and it's also an export line Oh. So we have one that goes to Denmark, 
Okay. And then we can have other cables that goes to other countries. Other countries. Okay. Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, Norway, etc. So that we can use these expensive big cables to both import and export from and to the island. So when there's no wind, we can have power made of water in Norway. Uh, turn that way and vice versa when there's lots of wind. And we hope that we have uh, the first island uh, on an existing island in 2030. And then uh, we will build an artificial island also oh. uh, and in an even larger scale uh, to 2033. So we hope in Chile we can just learn about your experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I have, we have a lot of condition to, to these turbines or wind turbines. You also have a lot of uh, waters and also a lot of good wind. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we have water, but it's too deep. So <laughs> anyway. Maybe floating uh, yeah, will be a possibility. Mm? We're going to call you. Mm. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Thank <very> you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much for the interview. Dejamos Dinamarca y volvemos a Chile para conocer un proyecto tan vanguardista como Energy Hub, que utiliza la energía del sol para producir calor. No es la energía fotovoltaica que comúnmente conocemos y su desarrollo es único en nuestra región. 